Welcome to this episode of Cheshire Community Church Life Stories. My name is Keith. I'm your host. This podcast dwells into the heart of the human experience, one remarkable story at a time. Every day, you and I interact with all different kinds of people. That might be a work associate, maybe our neighbor, maybe the barista, but each and every person has been formed by life events. And this is equally true for us as a community of believers. So this venue is a way for us to share our stories and to become better connected in a larger community of believers. Well, this episode of Chesterfield Community Church Life Stories is sponsored by C3 Student Ministries. Uh, the, th- the C3 Student Ministries is much more than goofing off and playing around in wacky games. While that is fun, there's a place for that. It's also in C3, C3 Student Ministries. Say that three times real fast that students are discipled so that they know Jesus personally, love Jesus supremely, and follow Jesus wholeheartedly. You can't tell I got that off the website, can you? (laughs) That, and so there's, they have weekly Bible studies, there's D Now, Discipleship Now, there's camps and other engaging, enriching life events for students. So we are grateful for all of our volunteers that make the C3 Student Ministry so successful. And we're grateful to introduce to you, to some of you, uh, Logan Mills, who is the newest student minister here at Chesterfield Community Church. So how you doing, Logan? Doing well, Keith. How are you? Doing well. So where do you hail from originally? Originally, I'm from Bryant, Arkansas. So, Bryant, Arkansas. Uh, kind of central area. If you throw a dart at the state, you hit Little Rock. And okay. then kind of 20 or 30 minutes out of that. Okay. So. North, south, east, west? Uh, right smack in the center. Okay. I mean, I mean of Little Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, no, know the math that well. Okay. Um, one, one of those four, I guess we could say. <laughs> that's okay. It's all right. It's been a while. So you're originally from Arkansas, and so that's that, was that where you grew up as a kid? Or? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we grew up there. Uh, we moved around a little bit. So um, who's we? So yeah, we, um, mom and dad, um, of good Christian believers, okay. uh, still married, still together, thankful for that. Yep. Um, I'm the oldest of three, so a younger brother and a younger sister, brother that's two years younger, and my sister's nine years younger. Okay. So she's been the baby of the family, which okay. has been fun. But. All right, yeah. So what was life like for you as a kid? You know, well, maybe some uh, an earliest childhood memory that you mm-hmm. have. Yeah. I had a pretty typical 2000s uh, childhood. So we still played outside in the street. Uh, we came home when the light, <laughs> the street lights came on. And, and this, know, got, this is in Arkansas, right? Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, it's still in Arkansas. Okay. Um, and so... Had lots of neighborhood friends and, and kind of hung around there. So, yeah, some of those like early memories are playing catch in the backyard, riding bikes down the street. So, okay. pretty typical stuff. All right, stuff. so what kind of bike did you have? Do you remember what kind of bicycle you had? Ooh, I think I had a, a Schwinn mountain bike oh, once wow. I got a little bit older. Of, yeah. You know, well, there's I, a lot of good trails there in Arkansas then, or did you ever yeah, go? Yeah, we were, we were little, so we didn't do a you ton did, of that. Okay. It was lots of uh, pavement pounding, so it okay. worked out there. <laughs> All right, I got gotcha. you. So are there any hobbies or interests that you enjoyed as a child that has mm-hmm. continued into your adult life? Yeah, I, as long as I could hold a controller, have been playing video games. Okay. And so that's been so the what's big your, one. So what's your go-to game? Yeah, since I was a kid, it's always been Nintendo stuff. N- um, okay. So I really like Mario Kart. Okay. Um, you know, Mario Odyssey has been one of my new favorites. I don't guess that one's terribly new anymore. But, but yeah, so enjoying that and mm-hmm. enjoy playing on the switch now and just getting to kind of decompress from Uh, some of that okay all right so tell me a little bit about your siblings your your younger brother and sister and and what were the dynamics there as the older brother in the family yeah um again i i think pretty typical just that uh, American kind of sibling lifestyle. Uh, my brother and I fought like brothers do, mm-hmm. um, but I'd hop in the car and do anything for him if he needed it. Right. Um, and my sister is, again, being that much younger, was always kind of the baby of the family. Mm-hmm. So she had two bigger, older, protective brothers. And so uh, that was always a, a fun bit there. And, and even if it was, you know, two of three of us or all three of us, um, it's it's always been pretty healthy and pretty good. Oh, good. So you said your parents were are believers mm-hmm. and and they brought you up with a spiritual background. How would you describe that? I mean, what I mean, how would you describe your 
their influence in your spiritual journey. Yeah, I can definitely say that uh, I'm fortunate enough that my parents brought me up in the way I should go, Mm -hmm. um, to loosely quote scripture there, just that, um, you know, some of my earliest memories from being a kid were from church stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, whether it was vacation Bible school or um, even was... Um, young enough or old enough, whichever way you look at it, to be in uh, children's choir and you know some performances and stuff like that. Okay, and, um, even some. So, camps what, what and, was some of the things that you did as far as children's choir? Did you do, did you have to do a solo? Ever do a solo? Like yeah, I, I did a few solos. Okay. There's probably some video somewhere and um, oh, maybe even man, on a VHS man. tape of yeah. <laughs> me crying after one. But oh, really crying but yeah, well, was well, had a lot of kind of just like nerves and stage fright. Oh, I gotcha. As a, as a I gotcha. Kid, yeah, so. I fainted one. Tyson. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Any, anything else there about your your parents? And your, so they brought you to church mm-hmm. and those types yeah. of things, vacation Bible school. Yeah, and, I mean, again, some of those earliest memories um, I knew knew of God. Uh-huh. Um, you know, you've your pretty typical kids ministry stuff of right. these big Old Testament stories and, and about yeah. Jesus and and even again from from early on, it was clear that. Um, that we were all sinners in need of a savior. And, and so, um, having that just kind of in the back of my mind and not really mm-hmm. connecting with what that meant I right. think until really, um, until I was six. Um, I remember after a VBS, um, stories told that I just kind of strolled up and went, Hey, I, I need to accept Jesus. And so then I okay. remember, uh, so a you past- were six years old yeah. and you did, wow, that's pretty yeah, so young. I remember yeah. a, a pastoral interview of sorts, we would call it uh-huh. after that to, to be sure that a six year old knew what he was talking doing. about. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just remember that that was, that was true. And I wanted that to be true for yeah. me. And, and so I was baptized shortly after and, Yeah. Um, so have you ever wavered from that commitment yeah. to that faith? Yeah, I was about to continue that okay. too, but um, just not so much in the faith, but in the action. Okay, um, I lived some. Uh, of those, what, do you, what do you mean by what do you mean by that? The, right. the action. Yeah, I lived those kind of spiritually rebellious teenage years. Okay, um, so right into middle school, um, we moved a bit from my dad's job. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was a stretch where, in uh, let's see if I get the math right. In uh, five years, I went to six different schools in three different wow. states. Sounds like military. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. So my dad's a government, but not military. Right. So we kind of moved like that. Right. Um, yeah. And then three kind of different areas. And so from Arkansas to uh, the D.C. area on the Virginia side and and then here to kind of Missouri where, where home has been now. Yeah. Um, and so that led to a lot of loneliness um, uh-huh. that wasn't anyone's fault. Right. I, was a, I was a shy, uh, a little bit socially awkward, uh, overweight kid. And so uh-huh. it was a little bit difficult to make friends. And, and when you're new and you know that it's kind of temporary, you kind of just check out and, and sure, roll with it. Right. And so yeah. you know, I knew I wasn't going to make lifelong friends, so you kind of right. just went with it. And, yeah. and led to a lot of loneliness that led to um, great grounds for, for some sexual sin to take over in my mm-hmm. life. And so the dynamic of knowing that I was a believer, knowing that I was saved and that mm-hmm. Jesus died for this sin, but but being trapped in in a daily sin. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm meaning of kind of spiritually rebellious years. Okay. Okay. Um, of just kind of for a season, knowing that I shouldn't have, but walking away right. from the faith. All right. I want to back up just a little bit. Yeah. You said you had. I don't know, difficulty making friends or mm-hmm. you, you know they weren't going to be long lasting. How, how has that uh, manifested itself in, in developing relationships as an adult? Yeah, big question. How much time do you have? <laughs> um, but in that, really, it was until uh, all through high school and even into college, I really started to see it break. But uh-huh. um, into young adulthood, mm-hmm. it was almost weird if people wanted to be like – Longer term friends. friends. Yeah. And so um, then with college, I found some of those like lasting, genuine friendships and connections mm-hmm. um, that I didn't really know what to do with. And, right. But as long as right. you kept pouring in and they kept pouring in, it just kept making sense. Yeah. And so some of my you know best friends are from college and are right. the result of kind of breaking through that and yeah. more so on on their faithfulness to me not yeah. so much of me being the greatest friend <laughs> yeah. yeah i found that it's really hard um i mean you know i kind of grew up the same way you mm-hmm. did you'd be moving around quite a bit and um 
I, I always like, what can they do for me, or how can they help me move mm-hmm. to the next stage? And it wasn't like you said until later in life. I think, you know, maybe we can just hang out together. And yeah. Was, yeah. So that that was that's hard. It's a hard lesson mm-hmm. to learn. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Going through your teenage years, was there an experience or a person mm-hmm. that impacted you uh, in, in a positive way, I guess, in your faith journey? Yeah. So in my teenage years, I really began to have kind of this heart pain almost of God reaching out to me and me kind of mm-hmm. shutting him off. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was still going to church on Sundays and, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes some student stuff on Wednesdays mm-hmm. had a lot of other extracurricular activities. And so um, it kind of now just were landed. You inv- I get, what I hear you saying that you, sure. were, you were involved in, in student ministry in yeah, the church I, there? Yeah, I or? would probably only, by my own choice, probably only nominally. Um, okay. We were, we were there and, you know, I so, was a like, faithful like, Sunday, okay, okay. Faithful Sunday morning kind of student. Uh-huh. Um, you wouldn't be able to tell from the outside. I knew all the right answers, uh-huh. but, but my heart wasn't in it. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, and so, really, that's that's leading to God slowly kind of cracking those walls I had put up. Okay, um, until I'm a junior in high school, um, and we're going to a Disciple Now weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember being toward the end of kind of that second day. Um, I couldn't tell you the the worship set. I okay. couldn't tell you the speaker or what he said. Um, but God and I just had a moment of honesty, and almost like He was speaking just to wow. me. Um, and I so um, you were well, how old were you then? Yeah, so that'd be you, you I was ju- I was seventeen. You were yeah. a junior then, yeah, so junior okay, high school, okay. seventeen or eighteen. Right. So, so from that, having a moment of just. Mm-hmm. Knowing again that sin that I had been mm-hmm. living in and committing and and you know kind of repenting of by name and and then just falling back into that cycle again and yeah. going God I want to get rid of this but I don't know how, how? right and I've tried everything that I, I can do and right. I just can't can't shake, shake it right. and and so then God really stepped in and said well you know you need to tell somebody because you're not supposed to go through life on your own and, and so again right. that loneliness and that, yeah you know yeah. not having that community right. or kind of having mm-hmm. it by name and it right. not being very genuine right um grew to a point where just i found um accountability and even some discipleship um from just that confession of sin mm-hmm. um to a trusted leader there um and so from that really began to to change kind of the trajectory of my life to mm-hmm. be okay no I'm not perfect I'm the farthest thing from it but yeah. but got a you've got a better plan than I do and right. so let's follow where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So you managed to get through high school, and mm-hmm. you have this. Well, would you call it a rededication or a recommitment to yeah. to, to to your faith? Yeah, and I would. Get if in we had to, had to put names on it, yeah, yeah okay. I, would, I would call it. All that. right. So, and then and then you go to college, I assume. Yeah. So, yeah. So so I um, worked toward graduating high school. Mm-hmm. Um, I changed. What I wanted to be when I grew up a uh-huh. ton, um, okay. and so I then eventually land on accounting, and so I I graduate from high school. I'm going to go to the University of Missouri for their five year accounting program. Um, and I'm going to get you like CPA when you got done there. Were you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it was okay. it was like right. their MA program, and uh-huh. you know it was it was kind of advertised as with, yeah. with five years of school you'll have kind of the American dream, you right. know, the six yeah. figure salary, the yeah. white picket fence, the two and a half kids and the dog, and all yeah. of this other. And so, um, not that any of that was terribly attractive to me, but just that it, it made sense, and right. I didn't. I knew that it wasn't. And like, your dad's kind of a numbers guy too. Isn't yeah. You? So my dad's a statistician, and my mom's an accountant. So, so yeah. if I had to pick between the two, accounting made more sense. Okay, <laughs> um, I got you. But, and just kind of at the time being kind of more logically, analytically minded, mm-hmm. again, made sense. And yeah. accounting is, is balancing a spreadsheet, which I could do fairly well from yeah. some practice at school. So. so do you still use those? That that experience, uh, or that educational o- experience, only a little bit. Um, so that was really just about a semester, and, and then got had oh, some just other plans. Okay. But, so but yeah, it's you it's helped. Deep into it. it helps yeah. some in, in everyday life, right. of Creating a budget Which, and making sure those numbers. So match you know up how to things. use Excel. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. at a at a very basic level, at a <laughs> elementary. Level. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so but yeah, from that of going to school. Um, knowing that it wasn't something I was incredibly passionate for, mm-hmm. or, or we would even say like created for. Right. Um, but just 
doing the thing, um, going to school, wanting to go to school, needing something to, you know, provide for yourself. And, right. And so then that led to a point of just knowing, okay, God, I'm growing in my faith. You and I are spending more time together. Right. And, and this makes sense, but I don't know that this is it. Right. Um, so while you were at Mizzou, did you get involved in any on campus ministries or anything like that? Yeah. So that played a big part in my story then. I uh-huh. um, was getting connected with the Baptist Student Union BSU, okay. um, and some other kind of campus ministry stuff there yeah. going on. Um, and really from that, helped me to have a quiet time for the first times and a okay. you know, personal Bible study. And okay. I began really to feel a new freedom to kind of worship with a true heart or a glad heart. Um, And so, you know, a campus worship scene helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just really saying, okay, I'm, I'm here. I'm probably here for four years, so I'm just going to dive in and, and found that community that I could uh-huh. have there. Um, even though it was short-lived, it, it really worked out and so helped me a lot. So who are some names that helped you in that process? Oh, geez. If you want to drop, catching me. It's, you're going to drop it's, some names here. It has, has been a long time, and, and none of them, I think, are there anymore. Right. Um, but... Um, I, I mean, yeah. you got your friends though from from, from there, right? That, <laughs> well, a lot of my friends were from from, from the next from, college. When oh, we get to that point. okay, all right. <laughs> well, let's talk about your yeah, next yeah. college then. Yeah. So, um, so from that, really, it's spring of that freshman year. Mm-hmm. I'm at Mizzou, mm-hmm. um, and just everything seemed to kind of be pointing that God had something different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't know what it would be, mm-hmm. so I did kind of the major change again. Mm-hmm. Um, tell the school that you're going to study something else in your first year a lot. Um, yep. I should have just declared undecided That's and right. figured out. Right. Um, but I, I reach a point where I go, God, I, I know that you've created me for a purpose. Right. I haven't found what it is. Right. And so if somebody's going to know, it's going to be you. Um, and, and then again, a similar instance of I'm in a – just having a personal Bible study, and okay. it's almost like the the Spirit spoke out loud and said, "Well, why don't you be a student pastor?" And I said, "I, I couldn't do that. Wow. I'm the first minister in my family going back either side as far as we can count." And right. so, growing up right. in the church, and uh-huh. every pastor I knew was a pastor's son oh, of a okay. pastor's son. Oh, okay. I so gotcha. I I just thought that ministry was a generational oh, thing, thing, right? Um, and so I kind of it's instantly like the family wrote, business, I right? Think, yeah. yeah. So I kind of instantly wrote it off, uh-huh. um, and and made up good reasons, but mm-hmm. but God wouldn't let that go for me. Right. Um, and so then after a lot of prayer and, and a lot of counsel decided, well, no, you, you probably are called to ministry. And so okay. you need to be in a place where you can pursue that and, and see if that's true. Yeah. Um, see if that calls confirmed by, you know, studies and others. And, and so that like led that. then to a change. In that your, led to a change big change. Yeah, okay. Big so change in, in college and major. Uh, uh-huh. um, so I, I transfer. Um, fill out the paperwork Easter weekend, which was sweet, um, of that year mm-hmm. to transfer to Missouri Baptist. Okay. Um, to go from accounting to studying um, Christian ministry with a youth ministry minor. Okay. Um, and so from from day one, it's it's been student ministry and okay, and it's been sweet. But but yeah, it's some of those lifelong friends really were, oh, from, were from, from the map. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So the perk. Yeah, you hang out at the perk. I worked at the perk. You too. worked at I was, the perk. I was at the perk all the time, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, perk. The perk kind of became that second home. And, that's right. And especially yeah. commuting toward the back end of school, yeah. it was. It is there's a, not. There's kind of one spot to sit at my bath. If that's, you haven't that's been, it. So. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I have, I spent many hours there. Yeah. Uh, spent uh, talking with students and mm-hmm. and studying myself too. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you you feel called to mm-hmm. go into student ministry, and you get um, get an, your degree from Missouri mm-hmm. Baptist University, and then and then where does life take you next? Yeah, not where I thought it was going to. Okay, um, and so my kind of bargain I made with God almost was okay. Here's here's where we're at, mm-hmm. but I want to get that four year degree, and I want to I want to start working. I want to start being in the real world. Okay, um, and so, so you want to go into the local church is what he was yeah, saying. Yeah, okay, yeah. So from you know from the get go, I was okay. like, let's get the degree and do the thing. Let's okay. not spend a whole lot of time in school. Okay, um, let's just let's get in a church somewhere. Uh huh. Um, and 
and again, God had other plans that worked out for the better. Okay. Um, and so from that, uh, really with some wise counsel um, from Dr. Matthew Easter, um, put a bug in my ear about going to seminary. Uh-huh. There was a great scholarship opportunity that was open. And oh, cool. He recommended me for that, um, wow. even after me telling him not to, <laughs> because <laughs> seminary wasn't for me. Right. Um, he said, no, I've, I've prayed about it, and I'm going to anyway. Um, and, and that worked out for the best. So, wow. so okay. big thanks to so him. So you go off to seminary, so. So where did yeah. you go get yeah, your so theological I, education from? Um, I went to and, and am going, going. to a Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, Kansas City. City yep. um, so I did a residential for about a year and a half, uh-huh. um, and then now has been close to or a little more than a year and a half uh, in an online hybrid option. Right. Um, and so really of any continuing education I've, yeah. I've hit in kind of any any way they yeah. offer, I've I've been in. in a so season. how how was your theological – um, or your seminary, mm-hmm. how has that helped you in ministry? Yeah, it has helped immensely. In, um, in what through, ways? Uh, through college, I again, that kind of attitude wrongly was – this is great and I'm learning a lot, but it, but it'll really matter later. Right, um, And okay. so then kind of going to school again almost mm-hmm. was enough to make me think through it again make me use it later almost and mm-hmm. to to sharpen those skills and mm-hmm. to to relearn and restudy and and to look at things again mm-hmm. through through a different perspective okay. um, some of it was even reading the same textbooks over oh, really? but that was enough for for kind of some humility on my part yeah. but also to because go, you thought you knew it right? Yeah, right i've been there done that yeah, i have a yeah, t-shirt exactly. so yeah i don't yeah. need to do this again so, why are we doing this again god absolutely yeah, like, so I hear that. worked that humility in me to go okay no i I don't know all of it now, uh-huh. and there's so much more that I can learn, and, and so then kind of created that passion for me to be that that lifelong student and learner, yeah. and yeah. and then to be be studying on my own. So, yeah. so helped immensely. So you, well, you're still working on your D. So I guess you found a, a, a church to serve somewhere then in the yeah. process. Or? Yeah. So. Um, all of that ended up being that I was in Kansas City, mm-hmm. uh, made the call to move back home to the St. Louis area, mm-hmm. um, continue through a through a hybrid option right. uh, with First Baptist through O'Fallon. Right. Um, and so then working through that opened up an opportunity um, to be at another church in a part-time capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that kind of had led down the road um, to a first full-time gig to, to then here. Okay. All right. Well, cool. So... That kind of takes you kind of your educational background mm-hmm. and getting into ministry, and we'll get a little more into that. But yeah. So how did you meet your wife? Yeah, uh, almost by sheer dumb luck and definitely by God's blessing. Um, Chloe and I met online. Mm-hmm. I kind of struck out in the dating game uh-huh. um, and was just tired of that and, right. and was looking for kind of the real deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we met online and uh-huh. and hit it off since the first date. Yeah. Um, we found out that we were both incredibly compatible, but also uh-huh. like-minded in almost everything. Um, and then those things that we weren't, it was easy enough to, to change your mind right. about and, right. and be yeah. on the same page. Yeah. Um, but just God had worked in, in both of our lives to mm-hmm. bring us both to a unique place where mm-hmm. that was what he had and, yeah. and at the time he had it. Yeah, and you are the proud father of of two. So uh-huh. Grayson is three, mm-hmm. and Walker is three weeks old. Three weeks old. Um, so yeah, two two very energetic boys at home. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's that's neat. And mom is doing well too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mom's it mom's is, doing great. Loving yeah. being at home with the boys. Yeah. So, um, so what's your favorite thing about working with students? Yeah. Student ministry is just fun, man. It's it's fun, and I love to see when students can take the truth of Scripture and, mm-hmm. and it kind of clicks. You see that light bulb moment yeah. almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there they work on applying it to their lives right. or, or it betters their understanding of, of Jesus yeah. or of a, you mm-hmm. know, even an Old Testament passage or yeah. something of like that. But but one of my favorite parts is is when, when students get it when, mm-hmm. it, when it clicks for them and, yeah. and God shows up in a fresh and unique yeah. way. Um, as a new student minister, what aspects of student ministry are you most passionate about mm-hmm. and eager for the future to explore? Yeah. In that, um, 
I'm interested in in biblical literacy so mm-hmm. that we know what the Bible says and, and again, how to apply it to our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm interested in also goofing around and having fun. Right. Um, and, and that kind of fellowship What's there. What's your favorite game? Um, ooh, my favorite game. Um, the students really like, uh, I've called it called Underground Church. They call it KFC. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, one of my favorites is is just usually something goofy you can play at D now and, okay. and kind of a kind right. of a back pocket game. So, okay. so it switches a lot. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> So what keeps you motivated to continue to serve students uh, in, in, in the rough days of ministry, yeah, yeah. tough days of ministry? What, what helps me is um, advice I heard early on that mm-hmm. ministry is a marathon, not a sprint. Right. And then remembering that the work that we do as ministers is one of the roles that has that eternal impact. Right. Um, and so keeping that in perspective mm-hmm. helps me to remember that whatever bad day or even bad season of days there's there's a time where there are no bad days right and so right. if we can keep working for for those days then then that's worth yeah. it yeah um so what do you think the greatest challenge students are facing mm-hmm. today as they seek to navigate uh life and and particularly being a follower of jesus mm-hmm. and, yeah, as as we do our best to live as Christians in mm-hmm. in our world today, um, our culture and even our faith, um, students today are forced to answer the question of identity, of yeah. who am I, what do I stand for, uh, what do I think about the world, what do mm-hmm. I think about the people around me, mm-hmm. um, and we see that in in almost in every way, shape, and form. Right. We see that in gender and sexual identity. Mm-hmm. We see that in the friends that we hang around. We see that in um, what's a non-negotiable for us as we look at college and beyond, as we mm-hmm. look at what kind of partner should I pursue and, mm-hmm. and what should we form our lives on, what mm-hmm. should I form my life on. Mm-hmm. Um, and so really culture is seeking to answer that question for our students right. of here's who you should be. Mm-hmm. Here's what we say is cool. Here's what we say is trending. Right. Here's what's here's what's morally good. Here's here's what our culture says are non negotiables. Right. Lots, almost all of those things are are counter to scripture. Right. And so as by just its nature, Christians are living counterculturally or right. against the culture, against the world. Right. And so then that thought is, well, how do we do that, do that well? well. Yeah. How do we root our lives and, and our own identities mm-hmm. in the scripture? And so do I wake up every morning and, and realize what the world is telling me? Or, and, and then do I kind of tell myself, no, I'm a child of God. And so what the scriptures say are most important. Yeah. And so biblical literacy comes from that and mm-hmm. discipleship environments come from that. And, yeah. and everything that we bring in to a Sunday or to a, to a student night, even just a hangout, is is all rooted in that of who, who do I think I am? Yeah, right. Um. What's one thing you wish more people understood about being a student minister? Yeah. I mean, being a student minister, a student pastor, um, one thing I wish people knew, and I think this church knows well, is mm-hmm. that it's not just fun and games. Right. It's not just goofing around. Right. Um, students go about the world facing adult problems right. um, without fully developed adult brains. Right. And so yeah. um, emotional issues are, they're charged and they're deep. Right. Um, spiritual issues are are deep longing sometimes mm-hmm. and, and the struggles that come in that. Um, that's what student ministers are, are volunteering to to faithfully shepherd and steward yeah. Yeah. is um, some of those big, what feels like life changing mm-hmm. decisions at the yeah. time um, to to kind of sometimes tone that down yeah. um, to put that into perspective, but sometimes just to to walk into that and say, "Hey, I'm I'm with you. You know, we're yeah. we're a church, we're a body. I'm I'm your brother in Christ, and and here's where we are. So, so sometimes or lots of times, it may look like it's fun and hanging out and eating pizza and Cheetos, but but a lot more of the time, it's it's right. just faithful work of ministry. Yeah. It's teaching, it's preaching, it's it's counseling, it's all of that. Right. Well, I do appreciate your work and your ministry. I, I recall a, a student uh, minister. Um, his name was Steve, and uh, he spent countless hours mm-hmm. with me. 
and uh, I mainly had girl troubles. <laughs> me too. And so he would listen to me, you know. And we and then and then we would have you know deep spiritual conversations mm-hmm. as well. And whether that was in sitting in his car in my driveway or at Hardee's or you know at a you know at a youth retreat and you know, sitting around a campfire. I mean, I surrendered mm-hmm. to student. I mean, to to full time Christian ministry as a seventeen year old. Mm-hmm. So what you do is so valuable and so Absolutely. important. So we uh, appreciate uh, you investing in our lives and our students. So, all right, you ready for the lightning round? I'm ready. Okay. What's your favorite season and why? Ooh, favorite season. Has to be fall. I don't like warmer temperatures, but okay. I like that fall isn't quite coats and hats weather yet. Okay. All right. What's your favorite go-to comfort food? Ooh, Chinese food. Chinese? Good good Chinese, Chinese from food. like a local restaurant. Okay. All right. All right. What's your favorite activity to recharge outside of ministry? Yeah, um, probably is is those video games. games, I like to kind of just unplug and and chill out and recharge. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us on Life Stories. Thanks for having uh, me. It was was cool to hear your story. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Welcome.